G'day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson. You're in for a treat this time because we're going to be adding the old pre-decimal uh, British currency pounds, shillings and pence. But to do so, I first of all want to explain where those terms came from. As a boy growing up in Australia, when I was quite young, we still had pounds, shillings and pence. Uh, I'm quite old. Decimalisation came into Australia in 1966 and I'm old enough to remember that. And uh, I remember the pounds, shillings and pence and wondering why the symbols were as they were. So let's explain that first and then we will uh, perform an addition and that will help us understand how place value is important in mathematics and you will understand in videos to come why place value is so important in our decimal number system. Let's look at the origin of the coin names. Interestingly, they developed way, way back in the days of the Roman Empire. Not all at the same time, and there were a wide variety of coins in use, but these particular names, these particular coins, uh, stuck in people's minds. The first one was the Libra. Of course, if you remember, the, if you saw the previous video, you understand that Libra, it's one of the signs of the zodiac, means the scales for weighing, and it was a weight of a pound of silver. Uh, the plural was Libre. There was another one called a Solidus, plural, Solidi. Uh, it was a gold weight. Uh, this was developed later in the Roman Empire. And there was another one called a Denarius, plural, Denarii. And a Denarius back in the days of the early days of the Roman Empire was roughly the wage that a labourer would earn in one day. So it was a day's income. There are some references to it in the New Testament of the Bible. A prefix den meant ten, and it was equal to ten asses, uh, which was a small bronze coin. But a denarius was a basic unit, it was a small silver coin, about that far across, quite a small silver coin. Now interestingly, these three, they changed their values and so on over the years. With the collapse of the Roman Empire, remember that Rome had conquered Britain, or large parts of Britain, as well as uh, most of uh, Europe and Northern Africa and the Middle East. But with the collapse of the Roman Empire, these, among other terms, continued on, and particularly these terms uh, stayed on in England. And with the invading Saxons, the Anglo-Saxon currency started to be based on these. Now, it's a complicated history, and I don't fully understand it, not by a long stretch. We understand there was a coin, or, or a concept at least, related to the word penny that came from the Saxons. So when they invaded England, this coin, based on the denarius, came to be known as a penny. This coin was used right through the Roman Empire, remember, so uh, when the Arabic nations, from Turkey and so on, extended into Europe, they adopted uh, coins called dinar, and some Arabic countries still have a dinar which is based on the denarius. Interestingly, it's because of this that the penny had the symbol D. Now the solidus, this gold coin, was related to another coin that was used in Saxon days called a shilling or a skilling, which apparently was a coin worth one sheep or one cow, uh, depending on where in England you were and it became our shilling. Now there were shillings all over uh, Europe, 
particularly in the Germanic countries. And it was just convenient that both of these started with an S. So we use the symbol S for a shilling. More on this later. The, by the way, this money was what early soldiers were paid in, particularly in France. And the soldier was paid in a solidus, and a soldier originally meant someone who was paid money. A, a solideur, or soldier. Now the libra, originally meaning a weight, in, in Germany there was a term, libra ponder, which meant a pound by weight. Sorry, a pound by weight. I'm really tired. And this gave us the term pound. But interestingly, we still retain the L for the symbol. And it's a very stylish L. So there's our L for Libra, the British pound. Our S, interestingly not for shilling, but S for solidus. And our D for denarius. And that's where we get the LSD from. Now, before I go any further, Yes, in the 1960s, there were a small handful of songs talking about LSD and playing a bit of a word game with the British currency and also with uh, the, uh, the drug, LSD. It is said that Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles may have been influenced by this. John Lennon says it was more to do with the painting that his uh, son created. Uh, Paul McCartney in later years said that uh, LSD was a factor in this, but who knows. But there were some other songs that talked about LSD. The word Libra, by the way, gave rise to a French uh, denomination called the Libra and the, the Italian Lira, which of course they used up until the time of the uh, Euro. Another interesting thing to note before we actually add these is that in writing money, we could write uh, five pennies, for example, as five with a D after it. The D was sometimes written up high and sometimes on the line, quite often on the line. If we had shillings and pence, I'm going to rub this off later, but uh, you could have seven shillings and three pence. But it was sometimes written simply seven shillings and threepence. But that's not how an S was written a few hundred years ago. An S was written like this. Which is where, if you understand senior mathematics, where we get our integral sign from. Because it's an S for sum, to add things up. But we're getting ahead of ourselves there. But this was the old-fashioned S. So seven shillings and threepence. And gradually, as that was written faster and faster, it became that. And this line that you see underneath the question mark on your keyboard is still called a solidus. That's where it came from. It used to be an old-fashioned S, a solidus for shilling or solidi. So seven shillings and threepence. Sometimes it would even be written seven with a little uh, apostrophe. Seven shillings and threepence. This often appeared in shop windows or books and it just looked a little bit neater than having a big slash. And with pounds, uh, sometimes you'd see one pound, uh, five shillings and fourpence, or sometimes one pound, five shillings and fourpence, and on occasions they'll put the D at the end as well. So there was a lot of variation in how uh, this kind of currency was written. Now, the number of pennies in a shilling and the number of shillings in a pound varied over the years. Uh, there was a long period of time when there were 240 pennies to a pound, so a few centuries in fact. But the system that was in existence in the early 1900s before Britain uh, decimalized in I think 1971 was that there were 12 pennies in a shilling 
and there were 20 shillings in a pound. So, let's draw a line here and let's do an addition. Let's imagine I have five pound, um, 15 shillings and eight pence. And to it, I'm going to add two pound, uh, seven shillings and let's make it sixpence halfpenny. How about that? Well, they had half coins, half pennies called halfpennies. And I'll change colour. So let's add them. Eight and six is 14 plus the half is 14 and a half. So these add up to 14 and a half pennies. Now, to take a group to the next column, we can only take them in bundles of 12 pennies. 12 pennies make a shilling. So we take 12 of those to make one shilling. And if we remove those 12 to take over here, what we're left with is two and a half pennies. Tuppence halfpenny. These ones, 15 and 7 and 1, 15 and 7 is 22, 23. So we have 23 shillings, but 20 shillings make up a pound. So if we take 20 of these over here, we get one pound. Removing those 20 leaves three shillings. And here we're left with five, six, seven, eight, eight pounds. So five pound, 15 shillings and eight pence, plus two pounds, seven shillings and six pence halfpenny, gives eight pounds, three shillings and tuppence halfpenny. You can see, if you think this is difficult, wait until you multiplied and divided. If you had to divide this by 7, for example, it became quite a nightmare. And uh, because of the benefits to our understanding of the decimal system, I will do this in a later video, but just not now. Here, I just want you to see that if we have columns where each column to the left is a bundle of whatever exists in the right, and this one's worth 20 of these, then we can pour, perform this addition provided we get enough bundles to put into the next column. This is called place notation. And also the concepts involved at the, con at the basis of uh, base arithmetic. And we'll deal with that in due course. I don't want to go any further at this point. I encourage you to research not just this currency, but your own uh, and when I post this video, I'll also be posting a link on my website where I will put scans of the pre-decimal Australian currency. So particularly those of you who, are, who have an interest in numismatics, an interest in money, and particularly those of you from Australia who are interested in the kind of currency we used to have, whether or not you remember it, uh, please go across to my website. The link is below the video in the description and uh, you can see images of that currency that I've been able to find. In the meantime, uh, I encourage you to try this a few times on your own. If you like the video, then please click on the like button below. I would really appreciate your, your feedback, particularly if it's constructive or positive, of course. And uh, if you aren't already a subscriber, then please click on the subscribe button. And I hope that you'll enjoy the future videos that you'll find. Thank you very much for watching.